we got why character design is about more than just style from Blaze. All right, let me see. So there's a game that came out recently, and I was going to start off with a joke about how you may not have heard about it before, but ironically <laughs> enough, this game is actually so unpopular that there's a real statistically significant chance that you are clicking on my tiny little video here, yeah. and you might not have actually heard of Concord before. So I'm a little late on this one, but regardless, I love watching videos about Concord and why they failed. Because I think the amount of videos made about Concord surpassed the amount of players that actually bought the game at this point. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so yeah, Concord. In case you haven't actually seen this game yet, it's basically the most recent attempt in the hero shooter genre to mm -hmm. dethrone games like Overwatch and the like. Big objective-based 5v5 combat where you play as a variety of unique characters with special abilities and guns and yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. But if you have heard of this game before, then frankly, what's actually newsworthy isn't really any of the gameplay elements themselves. It's the fact that this game is bombing harder than I think any other AAA game has bombed in recent memory. The peak player count on launch, according to Steam's charts, was literally only 700 or so people. Oh man, and this is pretty true. 700 people? Oh, bro. <laughs> Oh, I think we are surpassing this number with the amount of videos being made about why Concord was bad. <laughs> Which puts it comfortably below the peak player count of such dumpster fires like that terrible, terrible Lord of the Rings Golem game. Oh god. It's about 700. <laughs> there's always... There's always 700. <laughs> peak... 11 last 24 hour peak 11 there's two people playing Gollum oh my god that's so funny <laughs> but you know what the difference was or is between Concord and Gollum Concord took 8 years Gollum probably took like I don't know 2 or 3 years <laughs> that came out last year now, to be fair and to give the game a little bit of credit, this does not include the PS5 numbers, which are undoubtedly higher, or at least add to the total. Okay, but it sure. it's definitely not a good sign that the game is doing this badly on PC. So, a question on everyone, or, well, I guess... Bro, look at this. Who is gonna play as a refrigerator? If you're an aim bro, and, and you're an avid FPS player, you know... To never really pick the big chunky characters because the hit their the hitboxes on them are just so easy to hit. Like, what is this dude's like head hitbox? It's massive. Like, why aren't you aiming at the dude's head? You're you're sitting down there chilling at like his collarbone or where it would be at or whatever. This guy's head hitbox is huge. Why was this a good idea? To have a character like this the only reason you pick like a huge massive character like this is because of some sort of like team synergy thing with their like abilities or ultimate or whatever that's about it other than that everything about this character is a no from like an fps standpoint perspective this is you know what this reminds me of this reminds me of <laughs> those uh 7-Eleven drones with the coolers and like they have food in them and they're like entirely self-piloted and then you know how like some people will like fuck with it like push it on its side crack that shit open and like take everything that's what this robot character feels like <laughs> he's just coming around doing his thing trying to take the point and and here you are on whatever character and you're just like no headshot 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 <laughs> that's what this reminds me of I guess a question on some people there it is is why is this game bombing so incredibly hard i mean it's a triple a hero shooter with upwards of eight years of development behind it millions uh -huh. of dollars in funding and it's been marketed at numerous major gaming events this is a 
first party Sony PlayStation game. Mm -hmm. So how do you mess up this hard such that nobody ends up caring about your game on release pretty much at all? You know what I think? I think if Concord came out, like let's say this, they spent the, the same eight years doing their, their whole thing. They kept the same, uh, what do you call it? The same characters, whatever, same pronouns, all that jazz. But in order to stick it in Overwatch's face a little bit more, they should have came out with a PvE mode fully encapsulating with for every character with all the skill trees. Don't do these stupid little pie slices of like mini PvE limited time modes of like, oh, pay us $20 and you get like 15 minutes of gameplay out of this old mode or this limited time event like Overwatch. They should have came out swinging with uh, like an entire PvP mode. That would have been, that would have been funny. All right. I would have loved if they would have did that. We'd have, we, everybody would be having a different conversation for sure. Well, I think that there are a couple of reasons, but if you look up any of the discourse online, you will see countless people talking about how absolutely terrible and forgettable these character designs are. Now, this complaint is pretty widespread. I mean, it's basically the number one complaint you will see when you look up anything about the game. And I'm not saying that those people are wrong. In fact, I agree with them wholeheartedly. I think that these character designs look pretty awful and unappealing. Yeah. But it's also a pretty... It's, it's Diet Guardians of the Galaxy. And you know what? I didn't even realize this character was a dude. I thought this was a chick. vague criticism. Just saying that the characters look bad isn't really a particularly helpful critique. I mean, for one, why is the character design in particular ruining this game so hard? And is it really just a matter of taste, or is it something else? Well, with how nearly universal the negative reaction to this game has been, I think that it's far beyond a simple matter of taste. I think that this may be a case where people sort of have a gut feeling as to why they don't like something, but they might not be able to articulate a good specific explanation for why that is. Now to be fair, I am by no means an artist. I can't draw the human figure to save my life, so I'm not about to try and break I can. Down I'm an artist. There. Now can I be on the Concord uh, art team? Down the specific artistic choices and things like color theory to try and explain why these characters are ugly. But I think that the way that you design your game's characters actually can have a number of functional applications in game design as a whole. There is more to this kind of visual design than merely aesthetic appeal, although obviously that is still an important aspect of any game, if only for marketing reasons at the very least. Now, of course, the functional aspect of character design does matter to a varying degree depending on the kind of game that you're making. If you're making a turn-based RPG, for example, mm -hmm. then the way you design your characters I think matters a lot less in a mechanical sense when compared to, say, a typical hero shooter like Overwatch. It's yeah. actually, it just becomes a matter of taste, like I mentioned earlier. But <sighs> yeah, whenever you have a game like this, the hitboxes don't matter, uh, the clothes don't really matter, because you're not engaging in something that takes precision. Something like FPS. But when you are talking about games like Hero Shooters, like Concord, your character design elements can become a much more important method of conveying information. Mm -hmm. To show what I mean, in something like a turn-based RPG, like I said earlier, you can get away with things like having extensive tooltips and pop-ups that explain the exact abilities of any given character on screen. Mm -hmm. And since it's turn-based, the player has all of the time in the world that they want to read that information 
at their own pace. Yeah. So the character's design doesn't really have to actually convey much information to the player. But in a more fast-paced action game, character design becomes a lot more important. If I'm playing a game like Devil May Cry or Monster Hunter, I need to be able to tell exactly what each enemy is at a moment's notice because I simply do not have the time to yeah. be pulling up a journal every five minutes to see what the abilities of the enemies I'm fighting are. But conversely, uh, you gain this knowledge uh, over the course of time. Like whenever you see a character shape, you will instantly know what that character is capable of. But again, this comes with time. Uh, this is something true of like most hero shooters. Like on day one of Overwatch, this same thing happened. So I don't know if this is a good argument. Um, I mean, I get the concept of, I see this character shape, he should be able to do this, this, and this, but again, this only happens with, like, over the course of time, so, I don't know. Even if I could pause the game to do that, I probably wouldn't want to, as that would keep interrupting the flow of the fun I'm having. So, by ensuring that the characters in the game, in this case the enemies specifically, have unique and memorable designs, then that means I can go, oh, I know what you do, as soon as I see them, and then employ the right strategy to take them out. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this kind of functional character design, the two main points that we need to be on the lookout for are design elements that help convey what the character is capable of. So that would be things like a big character having a lot of health or a character with less health ending up looking more scrawny looking. Yeah. And then we also want to be on the lookout for design elements that are meant to help make a character more memorable. So that Usually for the whole health thing, I would agree that like the big character gets the more health because they need it because their hitboxes are easier to hit. But if you're not the big character, like every character can't be a big character. So that's like one thing. So then you have all the other characters. So how do we convey that same thing to that same, apply that same concept to other characters? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure how. Um, but I don't know, maybe he'll like talk that about we it. We can not only remember to associate those mechanical elements with that character, but also be able to pick them out in a crowd and be able to identify them at a glance. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, like I said, there is also the aesthetic appeal and all the usual marketing reasons that you'd want to make a character look cool. Yeah. But that is obviously much more subjective. <laughs> the overall aesthetic appeal. Yeah. Uh, last time I checked, nobody's buying merchandise for ugly characters in movies or TV shows or games, or movies, or books. Everybody wants to represent the cool character. For the most part, all right? I'm not gonna deal with this like minority, like fringe set of people that like, I'll rock the ugly character. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but you gotta understand most people, if they're gonna buy some sort of merchandise for like their favorite form of media or character or something, they want to have like a cool little sticker or something or about the cool character. They look cool. They did some cool shit. Their actions. Overall, though, I think that this becomes even more important in a multiplayer context. And I think that a great example of good character design that we can take a look at to learn from is, of course, Team Fortress 2. TF2 is a class-based shooter with nine distinct types of characters that you can play. And mm -hmm. since you are fighting other players, each character is inherently going to have as many unique abilities as every other character. So it's important that you can identify what those abilities are from a glance. So the design of the characters themselves has to do some heavy lifting. It's not just a matter of aesthetics anymore like it would be in an RPG. Like I said, each character needs to make sure that they convey both what their general role and combat abilities are, Ooh. but also be memorable enough that you can identify them instantly. Take the Heavy, for example. He's a big, barrel-chested man with massive arms and tiny legs. Even without knowing any of the weapons that he carries, mm -hmm. it's immediately obvious that you are looking at a big frontline tank here. This All guy right. clearly has a lot of health and isn't particularly concerned about his mobility, and he probably packs a punch on the offense side, too. Then you have a character like the Scout, who is the complete opposite. He's a lot scrawnier, and his legs are a lot more proportional. He also has his socks riding up towards his knees with his pants tucked into them, which helps emphasize his legs 
legs even more. Ooh. So again, even without knowing anything about the game or what weapons he uses, I think anyone can instantly identify this character as a low health, speedy run and gun style. This is actually really good insight. I like. I think this happened because I don't. I never played Titan or not Titanfall. Uh, Team Fortress Two. Uh, yeah. This is great because, as like any FPS bro, can immediately tell like what the character is capable of based on like what they look like. Like big chunky characters move slow. Frontline tank. Little skinny characters, uh, probably Speedy Boy. Maybe they have like a glass cannon type of thing. Uh, maybe like a medium character is like some sort of utility, uh, or maybe they throw projectiles or or they heal stuff or make turrets or something. Style of character, and all of TF2's characters are nearly perfect in this regard. If you look at someone like the engineer or the pyro or the medic, I probably don't even have to break down their designs at all because what they do feels immediately obvious to pretty much anyone that looks at them. You know another game that does this really good? The finals, <laughs> but with the finals, it's more in your face and obvious. Of this is the light class, this is the medium class, this is the heavy class. There is no guesswork. There's no trying to give the characters like personality in any way, shape or form. Uh, you just unlock cosmetics or buy cosmetics and just stick them on your character. It's just this is the big guy class, this is the medium guy class, just the little guy class. And on top of that, they each have memorable aspects of their character that makes them stand out from each of the other characters. The engineer is wearing a hard hat and goggles with big overalls. The medic is wearing a huge white coat, which makes him stand out from the rest of his team with their more red and blue focused designs. The pyro is covered in a fireproof suit and has a gas mask on. These design elements don't just help you identify what kinds of abilities that these characters have, but they also stand out as unique, memorable identifiers so you don't forget which character is which and can identify them at a a glance for split second decision making. So with these ideas fresh in our minds, I think it's about time we took another look at Concord. Concord has 16 characters to choose from, so let's just grab a few of them at random and see what we get. Take this person for example, their name is apparently Raka, and what can you tell me about their character? Just they got a big ass head, so it's easy to shoot. Uh, I'm looking at this from a pure like gameplay FPS bro uh, like perspective. Big ass head. Uh, they have like maybe a rocket launcher, so maybe they jump up in the air and like shoot rockets or something. But it's gonna be really easy to hit their head because it's ginormous. Just by looking at them. Go ahead, pause the video and post in the comments below if you think you know what they can do in the game. Right off the bat, they have an incredibly boring tan and beige color palette with beige. <laughs> only a splash of red in the visor of the helmet. So just in terms of color choices, I'm already losing interest in this character. Well, no, the reason why the red is there is to make it so that it's easier to keep your cursor on the red. So this is like the general area you would aim for. And also, like, when you have, like, a gigantic, um, like, hit, like, head hitbox like that, and then all of a sudden you put, like, a little, like, a visor thing in it that's a different color, like, mentally, it's easier to stay in the red. And it kind of gives away, like, which way the character is moving. Um, I mean, generally, you're going to get that from the legs, from which way the legs are pointing. But yeah, like with this, like you have this gigantic like oval hitbox, but inside it you have this like smaller like red hitbox or shape. So as long as your reticle is in the red, you're getting headshots. Plus, the skin tight suit that they're wearing is really giving me nothing to really work with here. So in terms of trying to ascertain their mechanics, I mean, I guess maybe the muted color palette and the fact that they're covered from head to toe in a thin suit could make them a stealth character, but... Stealth? Bro, I don't know if... I guess this is a girl? Uh, maybe? But they got rockets. 
Is this rockets? I would assume this is rockets. There's nothing stealth about rockets. <laughs> but obviously that's clearly wrong because she's holding a giant rocket launcher. Yeah. So what kind of stealth character does that? And that's the thing. I have to kind of fall back onto looking at the weapon to better identify this character. Because without the rocket launcher, I have almost nothing to go off of here. If you gave her a pistol, she would look like a more generic running gun type character. Yeah. If you gave her a shotgun, I would have no choice but to assume that she must be some kind of close range damage dealer. The fact that her weapon is the only identifiable feature of her character shows just how poor her design is. And even then, her weapon doesn't really tell me anything about her actual abilities and playstyle. Mm -hmm. Is she some kind of running gun glass cannon that can mm. deal big damage up close but can't take a hit? Is she some kind of long range AoE character? Well, if you want to actually know the answer, just looking up some gameplay of her, she basically has the same abilities as Pharah from Overwatch. She ah. can fly into the air and use her rocket launcher to rain down justice from above. Where was her jetpack then? Or did, was her jetpack just like really tiny and I couldn't see it? Like if you look right here, you cannot see like any jetpack. So I would have no idea that this character is capable of like, like not only getting into the air, but staying in the air launcher to rain down justice from above and now let's just put these two characters side by side for a minute ah uh, yeah now i get where he's going this is like good character design because was it pharaoh or pharah i think it's pharah pharah looks like a goddamn gundam and that's badass this is like like day one of a kindergartner learning how to M mess with play-doh that's what this is <laughs> do you see any slight differences in how these characters are made Farah right off the bat has a way more interesting and memorable color palette than this person does with bold striking blues and golds. Mm -hmm. She's clearly very well armored to reflect the fact that she uses explosives, but she still has a slim physique to represent that she's highly mobile. Oh, and there's the very slight detail, maybe you haven't picked up on it yet, but in case you haven't noticed, she uh, she looks like a goddamn bird, you know, to represent the fact that she can fly yeah. as the main centerpiece of her kit. The helmet she wears is very purposefully using mm -hmm. gold as the color of her prominent pointed visor to make it look like a bird beak. And she has very prominent, gigantic jetpack wings that jut out to her sides, which immediately tells anyone that looks at her that her main gimmick is that she can fly, which is a huge core element of this character that is missing from the visual design of the Concord iteration. Like... There is nothing that I can see on this character that lets me know that she can fly. Like, even if you were to take, like, those modern, uh, what do you call it? Like, those thrusters that people stick on their arms and legs to, like, do that noise. You know what I'm talking about? You see them at, like, uh, like, oceans and, like, docks and piers. Where they're doing, like, the Iron Man thing of, like, sucking up water and then shooting it straight down. Like, you could have... Uh, but even those, those are like super chunky. So those wouldn't, wouldn't even have been like a good add on. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to be clever here. The character can fly. So they evoke bird imagery to get that idea across. It's like, sir, there's, they want like a Concord team wanted certain things to be based in reality. And they wanted to just completely ignore the gamification of other things. Like, obviously, this doesn't exist in real life. Okay? Nobody actually has, like, this Iron Man suit with, like, workable thrusters and, like, a fucking grenade launcher with, like, missiles and all that shit. This is obviously a get video game character. This suit could be in real life, but I don't know what abilities she has. It's like, uh, they wanted certain things to be based in reality, like the personality, the character, like the gender and all this shit, but at the expense of the game mechanics, they wanted to just completely ignore. That, like, Concord was literally made by people that don't play FPSs.
It's very simple, but it works very well, especially when compared to this other character who is just wearing some kind of generic skin-type bodysuit and a fairly boring-looking helmet. But okay, maybe that's just one bad apple. Let's look at a few others. Mm -hmm. Take this character. Uh, Hamar is their name, apparently. Okay. What do you get from their design? Again. Okay, she got like this uh, black poncho thing. Big sleeves, gold beads. Uh, this looks like... This looks like a Waypoint character in Assassin's Creed. You know, like I'm going through town. And it's like, oh, get to this person. They'll give you the, ne the next quest. And it's like, OK, I pull up and like, this is what I see. This character looks like they belong in Assassin's Creed. Like not in a shooting game, not in a hero shooter. Feel free to take a guess down below if you want to play along. At no home. idea. This time, the weapon is invisible in their hero card, so we can't cheat by looking at that for a hint. So... They're wearing some boring gray robes with some gold beads around their belt. So in terms of color palette, I feel like we're off to a pretty bad start once again. Though they have some red magenta -y trim, I guess. And I guess they have some leather sleeves too. I mean, I'm really at a loss for what character traits I'm supposed to be going off of here. And like I said, I can't even look at the weapon for a hint. Not that I think that it would even help in this instance. Yeah. Well, do you know what they do? No. They're a straight up fire wizard. <laughs> What? A fire wizard? I mean, the whole outfit didn't really scream wizard. That's right. They can shoot explosives, summon walls of flame, flashbang people. None of these abilities are coming off to the character design whatsoever. The closest they come to an identifiable trait is having the red trim along her robes, but that's such a subtle detail that it really does not come off like an important character trait, especially when compared to the fact that her whole gimmick is that she can shoot fire. Let's compare this to a game that hasn't actually come out yet with... You know what? <sighs> You know what else didn't help Concord's case? Marvel Rivals coming out with like their beta like a month ahead of Concord. That did not help them at all. Because Marvel Rivals was actually a good game with good character. Well, I can't say good character design because all their characters are just ripped from comics. All the character design have a history of being good. Yeah, it, I think also timing, uh, uh, the timing of Concord releasing was not helping it. <laughs> Deadlocks in Furnace. Now, as you can probably guess by that name, this guy is very fire oriented as well. Yeah. But I probably didn't need to tell you that on the account of the fact that this guy is wearing a red shirt, a red hat, has orange sunglasses, and has bright glowing orange tattoos on his arms. Even if he wasn't literally on fire in every artwork that he's in, he conveys the idea of being a suave, cool, fire-based character about a million times more clearly than Haymar does. Hell, yeah. the fact that he's using... With just like all the red, it's like, okay, maybe this character does something red. Red-based. He doesn't really have a gun. I don't see a gun on him. He's got like a little handgun finger, but other than that, I couldn't really tell you what he would do. Finger guns, instead of carrying any obvious weapons, helps reinforce that he's clearly got some kind of innate ability that he's using. Whereas if we actually saw Haymar's weapon, which is a hand crossbow, by the way, that really doesn't help me at all figure yeah. out that she's actually a fire wizard. And it's so small that it's not really something I can identify at a glance anyways. And I mean, we can just keep playing this game over and over again, and we yeah. can keep running into the same problems. Baz here is allegedly a melee specialist, despite having no oh, yeah. visible armor or other identifiers that would make them look like a melee character, though I guess their design is at least unique. Daw is apparently a support medic that deploys drones, and they have nothing in their design that makes them look like any kind of doctor or engineer yeah. beyond maybe the gloves they have on, which is... Yeah, like what... Let me, let me see. That would make them look like a melee character. Wait, let me, where's like the image? We will keep running into the same problems. Baz here is allegedly a Like, I have no idea just based off of the character, like outfit, like what this character does. The only vibe that I would get is that 
because of like the the, the sneakers, like the 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 zoomer sneakers or the the sharp tail end on this like thing on this trench coat. It's like maybe it's trying to convey like speed. That's maybe something that I would guess. But other than that, I don't know what this character is capable of. Also, again, the head hitbox. I don't know if the hair was actually a hitbox, but having like this is essentially three heads. Like, what is it with all the characters having gigantic head hitboxes? Like, why? And having like a gigantic shoulders is not helping anybody. Like, if they actually did their due diligence and gave the shoulders a hitbox, they would quickly realize that, hey, this character is easy to hit. Like, I don't, like, somebody that played Concord, tell me if they actually tested out, like, the hair. Like, shooting the hair was actually had a hitbox. Because if it did, that is, again, a bonehead uh, mistake. Giving characters gigantic hair for the sake of, like, style. Nobody's picking the character with the gigantic head hitbox. <laughs> yeah, melee specialist, despite having no real visible armor or other identifiers that would make them look like a melee character, though I guess their design is at least unique. Daw is apparently a support medic that deploys drones, and they have nothing in their design that makes them look like any kind of doctor or engineer yeah. beyond maybe the gloves they have on, which is, again, way too subtle of a detail to really be identifiable at a glance. Jabali here gives me some sniper vibes without... Okay. You have, like, generic dude. Um... You know what this looks like? This looks like uh, he's got the outfit of like Yoon or Yang from Street Fighter, like with this like little monk-looking thing. That's what I get. <laughs> but he has like a fisherman hat <laughs> and like something in there. I don't know what the heck it is. It's like a monk outfit with a fisherman hat. Like what is this? And what is it with the circle glasses? This is like a, another character has like. Like, like, uh, the rose tinted glasses, like, like they're giving off like steampunk vibes, or at least that's the vibes that I get with these type of glasses, like steampunk. It's like such a mishmash of just design. A wide brimmed hat and the goggles, and he's got some kind of long barreled gun. So maybe things are starting to come together a bit here, except for the fact that he's actually just another mid ranged healer character. Teo uh. was the first one that I saw that unironically actually looks like the role he plays in game with him just looking like uh. a generic shooterman and his abilities yeah. being that he's a generic shooterman. Generic shooter guy. Oh, we'll throw all, all the white guys a bone. I'll give him their one character. Uh. It wasn't about that to begin with. <laughs> it was never about that. It wasn't. But again, he's still lacking any kind of memorable traits that I can attach to. Compare him to Soldier 76 from Overwatch, who at least has that cool jacket and a visor that makes him stand out a little bit, yeah. despite also being a generic shooterman. But yeah, yeah even when it can He's the Call of Duty dude. If you play Call of Duty and you're trying to get an Overwatch, go play Soldier. That's the point character in this game does at least a decent job at conveying what role they play like how Amari here is clearly some kind of frontline tank and Vale is clearly some kind of sniper they still often lack mm -hmm. any kind of memorable traits to make them stick in my mind my eyes just roll off of Amari's smooth boring armor and Vale I mean honestly I think Vale is my favorite character in the roster aesthetically but even then she still has an incredibly boring muted color scheme that yeah. just makes her feel forgettable to look at you know what this looks like this looks like somebody took the material and design of like a tube sock and just put it, put that texture over an entire outfit. It looks like she's wearing like a gigantic tube sock or like they stitched together a tube sock and made an outfit out of it. <laughs> That's the vibe I'm getting. So yeah, I think you get the idea by now. Character design is an important part of these kinds of fast-paced action games, and I think that this game utterly fails at the... Imp and this, this dude, this is like, this is like great value Winston. 
<laughs> we got Winston at Walmart. <laughs> But I want Winston. We got it at Walmart. Okay, great value. <laughs> Important mechanical aspects of that character design. At best, these characters might manage to have some memorable or unique aspect of their design without really conveying what they do, or they might convey a general idea. Again, what is up with this dude's head? <laughs> Can they not do like just regular heads? This guy is easily getting headshot. <laughs> Just shoot for the big red circle. <laughs> ...idea of what they do, but without really having any interesting, memorable qualities. And at the end of the day, based on the universal reaction to this game's trailers, I think it's pretty clear that they also fail to just make characters that are aesthetically appealing at all, which is a pretty important part of a hero shooter as well. If I'm watching gameplay and none of the characters look interesting enough for me to want to play as them, then that's going to directly harm sales. Plus, the vaguely sci-fi shooter aesthetic is, I think, wearing a bit thin by now with how many sci-fi shooters there are on the market these days. Yeah. Yeah. Between games like Overwatch, numerous Call of Duty spinoffs, Titanfall, and so many others. I mean uh, a split gate? Uh, okay, so uh, two cents, real quick. Overwatch is doing fine, it's whatever. Call of Duty is doing fine, it's whatever. Doom uh, is great. Doom is fine. They're coming out with another game. Trying to rekindle that, alright. Titanfall, it was good. It is good. There's no doubting about that. Um, as far as like the current player base, it's like Titanfall 2. Like no one's really playing Titanfall 2. A split gate, they're, you know, split gate 2 is supposed to be coming out. This is, It's just Halo with portals, but now they're trying to do Halo with portals and more abilities and shit. Um, but so the whole sci-fi shooter thing. Okay, I get what you're, you're talking about. Like sci-fi shooter, like fantasy kind of spacey uh, it does appear to be a little bit overdone um i don't really know how to change it i mean uh, literally every version of a shooter has been done old school shooter um like take fps or shooting game stick it in any uh what do you call it like time period or any walk of life on earth and it has probably been done uh like shooting games uh for like the old school civil war those have been done shooting like modern shooting games have been done call of duty call of duty has went in the future and then you have uh what else you you have space ninjas which is like warframe you have titanfall which is like could be in the future you have doom which is like demons and hell and kind of space but you're also shooting you have split gate uh which is like it appears to be like like just halo so kind of sci-fi shooter you have halo uh which is sci-fi shooter in space uh overwatch which is like kind of like a hodgepodge to be honest uh it's its own thing really i mean i don't know kind of it this like oh, the Overwatch vibe and the Apex Legends vibe, they, the vibe I get from them is like, it's like modern, but it's just like gamified. Like, yeah, you could stick it like in the future, but it's, it, it falls into like this weird wonky, like a hundred years into the future possibility type of era. It's like weird. Um, Fortnite. Fortnite is just regular ass people building houses. All right, there's nothing really special about that. Uh, same thing with Counter Strike. Counter Strike is like, you know, kind of based in reality. The the vibe that you're getting, it's all like the guns are like based in reality. It's like kind of modern. Uh, Valorant. I mean, Valorant is its own thing. It like. It's about the same thing as Counter Strike, but uh, aesthetically, it's like a more slicker version. It, it it I would say it kind of falls in line of like spacey. Well, not really spacey, but like if you look at the guns, you look at the characters. Like the characters appear like 
kind of modern-y. But if you look at the guns, the guns are all, like, cool-looking. I, I don't really know how to describe it. But, yeah, like, Concord... Concord just does not really know what... it. When I see Concord, I just see Diet Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> That's the vibe I got from it. I mean, hell, one of the things I love about Deadlock by comparison is that it's going for a more mystical style compared with the classic 1920s gangster aesthetic, which I think helps make the game really stand out in the crowd and give it a much more cohesive art style that all of its characters are built around. Not to mention that I think that Concord also falls into one of the more general artistic traps of wanting to strive for too much realism. To me, Overwatch, TF2s, and Deadlock's more cartoony art styles helps yeah. make their characters more charming. We don't mm -hmm. need to see every pore in their skin to become attached to them. Yeah. Meanwhile, characters in Concord look like random people off the street who just took a couple of random items yeah. from a sci-fi thrift shop. And like, take this lizard guy for example. He looks less like a lizard man and more like a human in lizard makeup. Like he's. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? This guy. He reminds me of the early aliens, in either Star Trek or Star Wars. It's obviously a humanoid type of alien, but it's just like stuff slapped on a human. There's no alien like body parts or appendages attached. <laughs> he's just like, he's got scales and he's got ears. He doesn't even have snake ears. He doesn't even have lizard ears. Don't lizards just have like little holes? Why do you got to give him a whole ass ear? And then he's got like these weird like this weird like mohawk scale thing and like some scales like coming up off his arm or whatever his little scale goatee it's like what do you shave it if you do aren't you shaving off your scales like ugh from Star Trek or something. I personally think that he would look far more interesting and appealing if he was a lot more lizard-like and a lot less detailed, which would also make him stand out a lot more from this very otherwise human. He would stand out a lot more, but he wouldn't be as relatable looking cast but instead they very clearly cared about trying to make this game as graphically intense as possible and as a result they just made him look like whatever mocap after they got on set and glued some lizard spikes onto him yeah and this is just my opinion but i've always felt like going for a more distinct art style is always going to be more yeah. universally appealing than trying to strive for realism games that strive for realism are fine in the present but in five or ten years they show their age. Games that go for artistic style, their their longevity lasts way longer than the games that go for realism. I mean, after all, what is considered realistic today will always look outdated in like five years or so. So yep. it's always just a losing battle. Meanwhile, games that focus on unique. Bro, I still can't get over it. How they just make like a yellow garbage can <laughs> a character art styles tend to be a lot more timeless. I mean, TF2 still looks good to this day, mm -hmm. despite coming out in 2007. But yeah, to get back on track with character yeah. design, the next question is, what could Concord have done to improve their characters? Well, I'm not trying to say that you have to rely on the exact same tropes that games like Overwatch or Deadlock do to design their characters, because... But you kind of have to rely on the same tropes and character designs that Overwatch and Deadlock do. Well, yes, I do think that a character like Farah is objectively better designed than Concord's equivalent. That doesn't mean that they necessarily had to design her to look like Farah to make her work. Giving her prominent wings on her jetpack could be one way of helping convey her flying abilities, but you could also go in a number of different directions and give her things like a pair of helicopter propellers that jut out from her back to get the same idea across yeah. or any number of other flying devices. And maybe instead of this generic space helmet, you could give her something that looks more akin to like what a fighter pilot it would wear to again help reinforce that flight aspect and additionally one of her other abilities is that she can rock it down to slam on the ground to deal damage after flying so maybe she should be wearing some kind of giant boots to help convey that idea as well as to help justify how she's even able to do that without breaking her legs every time <laughs> plus you could probably put some rockets on those boots to tie it back into the flight thing even more yeah and as for colors i think they chose blue for farah because it's like the sky and possibly went with blue and gold to be like the blue angel so like there's not 
not a terrible choice there, but yeah. you could maybe use things like white to represent clouds, or maybe even make her suit black with white stars on it to make her look like the night sky, since we're in space after all. There's, there's yeah. different ways. Yeah, this is just some YouTuber giving better character design advice than eight years of Concord. <laughs> that they could have gone with it that would still make sense and reinforce her character's abilities. Again, I'm obviously not an artist. I'm not saying I can draw a character better than the artist who drew this character can. And honestly, I don't think that the problems here are the fault of those artists because this kind of character design is a collaborative process between yep. the game design. It's not one person's fault. It's everybody's fault. When everybody wants to when, when your project fails and everybody wants to start pointing fingers, everybody can point the finger back to themselves designers, the directors, and the artists. The artists need to be given clear direction to emphasize these kinds of character traits to make sure that they in turn work for conveying the gameplay information that they need to convey. So wait, you think the artists were confused about the character design when they made these? I mean, I can, I would buy that if the game didn't take as long. Like, let's say the game took like two or three years to make, maybe four. But how are you going to be confused for eight years on a character design, dude? There's no way. No way they were confused. I think they made the characters the way they did because they wanted them to be that way. There's no way I'm not buying this. Oh, everybody was confused. I didn't know what to draw. Uh, no. So I think that the problem here, as is the problem that ruins so many other games, is that this game clearly just had terrible management and direction. Whoever was managing this project clearly didn't think that it was important for the character artists to collaborate with the people designing each character's abilities. And as a result, it feels like each character was designed with the most bare bones information and then were barely iterated upon beyond that. They clearly needed to be more back and forth and iteration between the artists and the game designers you think if concord was cooking in the oven more it would have been more successful i don't think so bro eight years you know how long eight years is it's eight years people you know what's that saying that you, every seven years you change into like a different person it takes you seven years to change you're saying that it takes longer than eight years to not be confused no, I am not buying this. Oh, give them like another year. Give it nine years. Give it 10 years. It would have been good. No, I reject that entirely. <laughs> Bro, just go into uh, the Unreal Engine market, buy some uh, whatever like character designs from there, stick all those character designs in there, and then work on a P like an all encompassing fully fleshed out PVE mode to just shit on Overwatch and then come out with your little Overwatch mode of like push and whatever and then also come out with an entirely all-encompassing PVE mode and be like hey everybody remember that other game that we will not say it kind of rhymes with uh, Joverwatch yeah we have a PVE mode come to us we, we got all your needs. That's what they should have done. But no, they chose to do all of this. They chose this and wanted it. And besides, uh, it took eight years to go through various iterations to get up to this point. More time would not have helped this working together on each character to try and make sure that the important character traits that represent their gameplay were emphasized. And then you can get the writers on board as well to help emphasize things like stuff from their backstories to help make the characters feel more unique and memorable. The fact that these character designs are so divorced from their gameplay just makes the game feel like each element was designed in a vacuum and then stitched together at the last minute, yeah. despite how much the game was made by people that don't play FPS. Everything was done in a vacuum. Everything was done inside a bubble 
an echo chamber where there, there were probably critiques on the game when they did their little beta and they just simply ignored them. They wanted to be in a vacuum. They wanted to be in their own bubble. Much time and money went into it. And I just feel like that's a real shame. But yeah, here at the end, while we're winding down, I just want to touch on a couple of other elements that I think did or didn't contribute to this game's ultimate failure that are also floating around in the discourse. For one, there are obviously a number of people that are trying to use this game's failure to push an agenda. So no, I yeah. do not think that this game failed because its characters are too diverse or anything stupid like that. Needless to say, there are countless examples of games with a diverse range of representation in ethnicities and body types and Uh, this thing. The characters are all, like, goofy-looking and stupid-looking. I don't care what character sleeps with what. I don't care if the yellow garbage can sleeps with the, the red garbage can, and then they can have an orange garbage can baby. <laughs> I don't care if the, the blue-slash-red monkey sleeps with the green monkey, and then they make, like, a bluish green monkey. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if the fungi thing had sex with the, like the yellow fungus thing had sex with the the purple fungus thing. It's like this doesn't matter to me. When I see a cast that looks like this, I immediately think that whoever made this game has made it with an agenda. And so because of that, I don't want that in my life. I don't want to think about it at all. I'm just going to go play some other FPS game. that's already well established itself. That's what I'm going to do. What not and so forth that have made millions and have shown that you can make cool and appealing characters with a wide range of body types before. I mean, yeah. hell, I feel like Overwatch alone should probably be enough of an example to disprove this point. Yeah, you got everybody in here. Like, <laughs> everybody is in here. Point. And the brand new Deadlock also has a pretty diverse range of characters as well, and that game is crushing Concord despite being invite only. And another much sillier point that I've seen over the... A invite, I, I actually find it hilarious how Deadlock is doing their, uh, like, invite, invites. Because <laughs> you have to be, like, a really good FPS bro. To even get an invite in here that's that's the caveat <laughs> you have to be a a some sort of established person in fps and you know what's funny i say fps and no one is saying it really at least i don't think it's only like m and k people i think i don't know if this game has a uh, like controller uh stuff built in I don't have, know if it has aim assist in there. I don't know if it's going to have crossplay built in, but <laughs> I'm kind of going off topic. For the console war space is people trying to argue that Concord could have done a lot better if only it came out on Xbox too. And I'm just like, no. they already released on PS5 and PC, which is a huge majority of the possible gaming <laughs> yeah. market share, whereas Xbox consoles are doing really badly right now. Yeah. Would it really sell more copies that way? Like, like would it sell an additional couple of copies? Sure. Probably, but like I just said, the PC already has a much larger install base, and it's doing terribly there. So I don't see how selling maybe an extra 300 copies on Xbox is supposed to turn things around. And for that <laughs> matter, I don't think that it's just a matter of being tired of the hero shooter genre. I mean, despite all of the strife that has happened with Overwatch, it's still pulling pretty massive numbers by comparison. And again, I mean, I honestly think the hero shooter genre is very tiresome and oversaturated the only reason deadlock is like ha has like any sort of success is because they had to take two entirely different genres and slam them together backed with the backing of valve all right because we have already seen a game like deadlock it's called smite it's a moba and a shooter Okay, there, but 
I don't know who made Smite. They got their own thing. Like, I don't know if they have an anti-cheat, whatever. Uh, Valve making uh, their version of Smite. It's just like, there's a level of trust and of like brand trust that people have with like Valve because Valve is responsible for Counter-Strike. It's like, that's the FPS game. You know, it's so popular. A million concurrence. Ugh. Gambling on skins. Oh, that's badass. Okay. They had to take an ent two entirely different genres. Ones that you would think that don't go together. And it's like, yeah, we're about to do that. We're about to smush these two genres together. And you know what? You're going to like it because it's going to be good. And we're only going to showcase the game uh, when only good players play it. Okay. That's that's what we're doing. And that's smart. Again, Deadlock, while technically not a hero shooter, is still doing really, really well despite being in a closed alpha. Though, that does bring up another point which I think is valid, which is the price tag. This is arguably the other uh, biggest factor with this uh, yeah. game that is causing it problems. And that is the fact that it costs $40 to play. Now sure, back when it first came out, Overwatch also cost $40, but there were a lot fewer hero shooters back then, and nowadays that game is free to play. Similarly, Deadlock is also lacking any kind of monetization currently, and I don't know what, it'll, what its final product will be like, but I imagine that game will also probably be free to play, as is Team Fortress 2. Yeah. So launching at a $40 price tag up front is definitely not doing this game any favors. When uh, there's just so many things that are going against the game. It looks ugly. Forty dollars came after Marvel Rivals. Came eight years after Overwatch. Ugh. When its direct competition is free, it's basically the same problem that Valve's card game Artifact had when the most when most other popular digital card games went with a free to play model. Yeah. It can be argued whether the price tag or the bad character designs have done more harm to this game, but the reason why I would argue that the character designs are the biggest factor is because we already have an example of a, the game being in a more accessible state. Before launch, there was a pre order beta, so anyone who pre ordered the game could play in the beta, and then didn't do so hot but then they opened up the beta to just anyone so that anybody could try the game out without any monetary incentive and even then on steam they only peaked at around 2300 players so i feel like even if the game launched with a price tag of zero dollars and did twice as good as it did in the beta uh, it would still be an unmitigated failure compared yeah. to how much money went into it <laughs> And like looking at various reviews, the gameplay is at least serviceable. Hell, some people actually liked the writing and things like that. So there's a number of other aspects of the game that are at least nowhere near as universally hated as the character designs. So I think that we have nothing left to really blame but the art direction for this game's failure. And I think that that makes sense because, like I said earlier, if a game just doesn't look appealing, then they're not going to give it the time of day, regardless of how good your gameplay or story or whatever else might be. And I mean, I'm normally a gameplay-first kind of guy. I will play a game if I enjoy the gameplay a lot more than, like, the story or the art direction or things like that. But... You need me to actually play the game first, and if the game is ugly, yeah. then that's just not going to happen. But, as always, I'm happy to continue the conversation in the comments down below. What do you think about Concord and its art direction? Did you even hear about the game before watching this video? And either way, do you think that the game was really killed by its poor character design? Sure. Uh, bro, it's not like everybody wants to find the one thing. Like, this one thing was the reason Concord failed. No! It's a bunch of things that was the reason Concord failed. It's not just one thing. It's never just one thing. Because if it was just one thing, more people would be saying it's this one thing. But it's not. It's a bunch of things. Sure, it was probably never going to be the next Overwatch, even in the best of timelines, but clearly something must be going terribly wrong for something to sell this poorly, despite how much money went into it. And if you liked what you saw, remember to leave me a like. If you want to see me make more videos like this, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you can get notified of when I make more videos in the future. If you want to really help the channel out, then you can become a member on YouTube or donate to my Ko-Fi to help me keep doing what I'm doing. But for now... Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Nice. Oh, man.
that was a pretty good video. I liked it. I mean, I never really considered like, uh, like the art design, the sole reason, uh, or like Concord, like just dying. Uh, you know, everything you, you were talking about, how like, like, let's take World of Warcraft as an example. It's like, you look at the warrior class. You want, you think warrior, you have this preconceived notion of a warrior. You want to see like big chunky shoulders, maybe some spikes, maybe like a gladi gladiatorial helmet in there. It's like, you have this idea in your head, much the same way of like the priest character. It's like, you got some cloth. Maybe you have some like holy, like little holograms behind you. Uh, you have like a little priest hat or something. Maybe you carry a book. Uh, you have like these preconceived uh, notions in your head when you see a class of what the class should be capable of. Uh, but I mean, Concord, uh, you don't know what anybody is doing. All right. What's the what's the yellow garbage can going to do? Take out my my trash. What's it going to do? Open up and like I put like my glass bottles in there to recycle it. What? <laughs> oh, man. But uh. Concord looks like live action Netflix adaptation of itself. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. You know, the anime to Netflix adaptation. That's what Concord was. <laughs> oh man. But, uh, yeah, overall good video, man. I liked it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I want to see more, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right. Later.